The colony hummed with life. Women going about their business. Girls spending their after school hours helping with their mother's work or playing in the park. The last male the colony saw was over a hundred years ago. Someday, though, when it came time for everyone to leave the colony for a new life, the frozen gametes would be poured out, and males would become a part of the population again. Alita shook her head to clear out the dreams of things she'd never lived to see. Her grey dreadlocks fell around her face. The beauty of her full features still showed through the wrinkles in her clear, dark, honey-brown skin and hazel eyes. She looked at the deep wrinkles of her knuckles, wondering when she got so old. With a renewed focus, she graded the final assignments of the group four girls she'd been teaching this past cycle. Years ago, her own daughter was one of her pupils, from group two at eight, through group four at sixteen. Next cycle, her granddaughter would be starting group two, and be one of her students as well. The girls knew her as a kind teacher, despite the heavy workload she imposed, and she'd never had a student fail. Her pad chimed and she answered. Hey. Hey, Mum. Macy wanted to come visit with her friend Zia. You home? I will be in ten minutes, she said. I take it you're working another long shift? Mum. Taryn, you can't let them take advantage of you like that. Says the woman that would work herself to the bone in the orchard if she still could. Taryn laughed. No one's taken advantage. I love working in maintenance. Anyway, Macy and Zia want to tie on knots today. And she wants you to help instead of me or Corin. Who? Zia's mum. Ah, like I said, I'll be home in ten. Will I see you tonight? Yeah, I'll stop by, Taryn said. Love you. Love you too. Alita watched Macy giggling with Zia and braiding a colourful cord. One red, one blue, three purple and one gold strand. The colours that Macy's mother, Taryn, had given her. The same colours that Alita had given Taryn and had been given to Alita when she was about the same age. The cord that Zia braided was two strands red, one white, two tan and one black. The colours of her lineage. The girls were as different as their cords. Macy's dark amber complexion, broad nose and full mouth, with a pile of brown curls falling in front of her amber eyes contrasted against Zia's pale, golden skin, green eyes and bright blonde hair that fell straight to her shoulders. After helping the girls cut their cords with a hot knife, Felita worried at the single braid around her own wrist. Now long faded. Half red, blue, purple, gold like the cord Zia had just made, and half brown, green, blue, yellow, the colours for Nera's line. When she once had dozens of braids, Alita now had only the one. If Nera were to pass... She chuckled quietly to herself. Friends or no, Nera was 35 years, 70 cycles her junior. Did she friend me out of pity? No, that's not right. I had seven braids back then, before everyone... What are you thinking about, Gran? Macy's voice was tinged with the laughter that she'd been sharing with her friend. Your face looks like you ate a sour berry. Nothing important, sweetheart, Alita smiled. Are you two ready to tie on your first braids? Yes, Miss Alita. Zia bowed slightly as she answered. Just Alita is fine, little one. Alita stood, the grinding pain in her hip reminding her of the accident. Macy, Zia, this is your first friending. As such, it's important that you understand what it means. Yes, Gran, Macy squirmed. Anxious to get on with it. What are friends? Alita asked. They're the family you choose. Zia's response was automatic. A common phrase heard throughout the colony. That's right, Zia. Macy, what do friends do? Alita asked. They look out for each other. Macy's answer was crisp, rehearsed. Very well. Zia, how do friends look out for each other? Zia puffed up her chest. They share, Miss Alita. True. Alita looked at the girls holding their cords, huge grins beaming. What sort of things do friends share? The girls started answering. Zia throwing out one word and Macy following with another. Toys, clothes, books, food, chores, birthdays? No, Macy, your birthdays are still your own. But I share mine with Zia. Alita laughed. I'm sure you would. But the most important things friends share are the happy times and the sad times. Their grins dropped a notch as the girls nodded. Yes, Gran, Macy said. If Zia's sad, I'll be sad with her. And if Macy's sad, I'll do the same, Zia said. They looked at each other and began to giggle. Okay, girls. How long is friendship? Forever, they answered in unison. Forever, unless... Alita asked. Unless we get annulled, Macy answered, eyes downcast. Her smile returned after a second. But we won't, will we, Zia? No. Zia's answer was emphatic. Very well. Tie your braces on. 
Be sure to leave lots of room for growing. Will you help us, Gran? Of course, sweetie. Alita knew the pain of annulment. She and Jen had friended at the age of 13 when they shared a biology project. They remained friends through school, vocational training and working together for three years in the greenhouse. Then came the first elections they were eligible to vote in. Jen voted for her mother's friend, Nika, while Alita voted for Shell. Nika was a polite woman, but not the brightest, and certainly not cut out to lead. Her poor decisions piled onto each other, resulting in longer working hours, less food, and a far harder environment to endure. Through it all, Jen first made excuses and apologies, then began outright attacking anyone, including Alita, that complained or disagreed with anything Nika did. They annulled their friendship over it, less than a week before the accident made it moot. Are you okay, Miss Alita? Zia asked. Yes, dear, I'm fine. Sorry, I just have a lot on my mind today. Alita smiled and knelt in front of the girls to help them tie their bracelets, and gave them each a piece of hard candy from her stash. It took her considerably longer to return to her feet after she'd finished, and Macy offered a helping hand. After clearing up their mess, the girls took off down the corridor, hand in hand, their giggles fading as they got farther away. Alita made herself a light lunch, a roll, a green apple, 20 grams of cheese and a cup of hot tea. She ate it slowly, saving the tang of the apple with the mildness of the soft cheese. The roll was stale, but quite edible when dipped in the tea. The week between cycles was always slow, unless it was an election year. There had just been an election last year, so all was quiet on that front for another four. Alita thought about dropping in to the biolab to keep herself busy, then thought better of it. It might look like she didn't trust their work. Her hip throbbed, and she looked at the few pain meds she had left for the week. One a day, and she would save those for right before going to sleep at night. She made a cup of willow tea from the stash in her bedside drawer, and gulped down the bitter drink as soon as it was cool enough. Alita lay down on the bed to rest when the door chime sounded. Come in, Nera. How did you know it was me? Nera asked as she stepped in. My daughter doesn't call around this early in the day, and... She raised her wrist and grabbed the single braid around it. Fair enough. I've come to find out if you'll be okay with the new ration plan. Oh, I haven't read it yet, Alita shrugged. I'm not so young or active as you, so I can get by on fewer calories if needs be. Actually, the food rations aren't changing. Nira sat on the edge of the bed and took Alita's hand. Medication rations are being reduced, while the medicinal garden recovers from the fungus rot, and we look for the next cloud of raw materials for the synthetics. How much? Alita thought about her few remaining pills, and her upcoming ration renewal for the new cycle. A reduction of two-thirds of plant-based for the next cycle or two, and three quarters for synthetics for the foreseeable future, Nira sighed. It's been decades, but my mother's ghost is still haunting us. Your mother didn't have anything to do with it. The rot fungus keeps evolving, and there's not much to be done for it. Alita sat up. Your mother wasn't a bad person. No, Nira said. Just a horrible leader. Alita waved a dismissive hand. None of that nonsense. She did the best she could. Removing the caps and raw mineral usage without a cloud lined up to resupply was not the best she could. Nira sighed, a mix of exasperation and resignation. She told me, before the cancer took her away, why she did it. The cloud that was scouted didn't pan out. Nira shook her head. No. That was a lie her advisors told after the fact. She did it because she wanted to be remembered. She thought she could make everyone happy, and they'd love her for it. I didn't agree with her politics. Hell, I didn't even vote for her, but I still loved her. I hope she knew that. Even after the accident? I don't blame her for that. Alita took Nira's hand in her own and patted it. It's always a risk. Sorry for being maudlin, Nira smiled. I wanted to ask if you need any pain med rations. I'm not taking any for the foreseeable future, and I know how your hip gets. She looked at the single band on the older woman's wrist. And I know you don't have anyone else to ask. Thank you, dear. If I do need some, I'll let you know. Alita followed Nira's gaze to her wrist. Do you know where the friendling started? No, actually, I don't. My great-grandmother's generation had bands like these, but it was just a thing young girls did. Back then, there were boys too. Alita thought back to her grandmother's stories. When my grandmother's generation figured out that the boys weren't growing into viable men to keep the stores going, they stopped birthing them. Of course, IVG, in vitro, gametogenesis, was the key to that, and to preserving the remaining sperm stores. I've heard stories about the males. 
What does that have to do with friendling? I'm getting there, young lady. Nero laughed. Okay, old lady. Well, the bands made with the polyfiber we use now started then, but only one band denoting your secondary parental line. Alita raised her hand to stop Nero interrupting with another question. That's not how it's used now, but that's how it was used then. Alita closed her eyes, remembering the stories her grandmother told. Things started to climb almost immediately. There were too many births and not enough room in the colony for them, not to mention food. That's when splitting bands and sharing them with friends was first used as a symbol of sharing. It said, what I have, you have. Those of our friends, well, we know how that worked out. Why weren't they maintaining birth quotas? Nira looked at Alita as if she had just told her that a purple unicorn was standing behind her. The reduced virility of the males kept the birth rates in check. Alita chuckled. Grandmother said it certainly wasn't for lack of trying, but going from a slight chance of pregnancy with a male that may as well be declared sterile to an almost guaranteed pregnancy when you want it changes things. Wow. Nira's gaze was fixed on the spot on the floor. Yes, wow. That was the first time friending was put to the test. With food rushing to half, nursing mothers with lots of friends did okay. A dozen people all giving up a tiny bit of their rations made a difference. Those were only one or two friends. Their babies didn't starve at the breast, but they didn't exactly thrive. Those without. Alita shook her head, remembering her grandmother's tears as she told the story. Baby starved at their mother's breast, if she was lucky. If not, her body consumed itself to feed her infant. In those cases, both died. How did that turn into... Nira stopped herself. That came in the third month of the crisis. Those who had been starving were in no condition to work. Those who couldn't or wouldn't work were given the option of no rations or step out the door and leave the colony. Most chose the door. At least we won't have the same problem again. The population is capped and stable, so why do we still... Nira let the question trail off. How do you think we would have handled things after the greenhouse incident? Alita rubbed her hip. The sharp, throbbing pain, a constant reminder. A tiny bit of ice hidden in the cloud. At those speeds? She remembered the booming sound, followed by the sudden loss of pressure. It came through the roof, hit the apple tree Jen had been harvesting, turning it and everything around it into a high-energy shrapnel, a piece of which shattered my hip. If it weren't for my friends showing their rations while I recovered, I wouldn't have survived. Did you know that they declared a new apple tree in the greenhouse too to Jen? Nero scooted closer to Alita. Yes, I heard. I'm just sad we never reconciled. She put an arm around the younger woman. Don't ever talk politics with your friends. It just leads to heartache. Nira leaned her head against Alita's shoulder. Anyway, if you need any bed rations, just call me. She let out a long sigh. When are the next classes starting? I'd imagine your granddaughter and her new friend will be in your classes cycle? Yes, yes. I found someone to teach a history class as well. We can't forget why we do things the way we do. Alita kissed near his head. It means the girls will have to work half again as hard, but they're more than capable. Alita felt an unasked question, a hesitation on Nira's part. She decided to answer without making it obvious that's what she was doing. I'm thinking that I can teach her another five cycles, maybe six. By then we should have another biology teacher ready to take over. Hell, you're ready now if you want to step up. Nira's eyes pulled with tears. I can't put you out of a job just yet, old lady. I'll miss you when you go. Alita hugged her close. I know, dear, but I can't be here forever. Nira composed herself and sat up. Speaking of jobs, Leela wanted to spend some time with you in the biolab. She has an idea to interrupt the reproductive cycle of the fungus rot. Why didn't she ask you? You're managing the apprentices and you're every bit as good a biologist as me. I looked it over, she said, and it seems sound. I'm just worried I missed something. Alita raised an eyebrow at her. So... Who wants me to spend some time in the biolab? Nira pursed her lips. It's me. I want you to work with Lita on the fungus. I'll make you a deal, Alita said. While I'm working in the lab with Leela, you take over teaching. There's three classes a day. Group four, then three, then two. And you're done by mid-morning. Are you sure? I am. I don't have the energy to teach and work in the lab in the same day anymore. Alita didn't tell her that it wasn't energy that was the issue, but pain. You're already doing a good job with the two apprentices, so I know you're capable. Fine. I'll take over the next cycle. Until you're done in the lab. Good girl, Alita said. Now get out of here so I can rest before my daughter shows up. And tell Alita I'll meet her there in the morning. The cycle starts next week, so you have some time to go over my lesson plans. 
After Nira left, Anita lay back on her bed to rest. Pain kept her from sleeping, but she could close her eyes, focus on her breathing, and try to command the muscles in her hip to cease their spasms. She spent far too many nights like this, lying awake and trying to will the pain away. The hours passed, and the sounds of the colony around her room changed. She knew by the increased activity outside her door that her daughter would be by soon. With a long breath, she sat herself up on the edge of the bed to wait. Her door chimes sounded, and before she could respond, Taryn walked in, carrying a small sack. Hey, Mum. Hey, kiddo. Alita looked at her daughter. Aside from the close-cropped hair and the grease stains on her knuckles and fingernails, it was like looking in a mirror at her younger self. I take it you know about the new rations. Taryn removed tea bags from the sack and set about making two cups of tea. Nera told me. If you need any pain meds... No. You'll walk around all those machines. And if you or Maisie get hurt, just... No. Alita smiled, hoping the pain was well hidden. I've lived with this long enough that I'm just used to it. If you're sure, Terra replied. But if I find out you're in worse shape than you let on, I'll hold you down and make you take my rations. Alita raised a mock fist. You can try, young lady. But there's still some fight left in these bones. Terran smirked. Sure, sure. Maisie's excited to start in Group 2 next week. Ah... I should let her know that Nero will be taking over the class, she said, just for a while. My help is needed in the bio lab. Mum, you do too much. That's on the other side of the colony. You don't need to be walking that far every day. I do too much? You will want to talk? Alita laughed. Oh, I have some candy in the drawer over there. I know you want a piece. Mum, I'm not a kid anymore. But I'll take one, just to humour you. Taryn popped the hard candy in her mouth and smiled, her eyes closing in pleasure. It's not like I have a sweet tooth or anything. Are you going to spend less time in maintenance when you start teaching history next cycle? For sure, at first. Half day teaching, half getting greasy. Taryn talked around the candy. I still have to train the apprentices in the morning, so class will be in the afternoon. I'll see how I feel after a couple weeks before I stretch into doing maintenance in the evenings. And who will watch Macy then? I don't know yet. Shit. I need to get home and start dinner. Taryn kissed on her mother's cheek. Love you, Mum. Love you. The walk to the bio lab wasn't as arduous as Lita had feared, but a few hours' work, and the walk home still lay before her. Lita had been her sole Group 4 student two cycles ago. She was inquisitive, fearless, and dogged when it came to research. Alita had known that she'd be a fine scientist. Miss Alita, Lita said, holding the door open. She was shorter than Alita, with wavy jet black hair surrounding a pale pink face dotted with freckles. Her pale blue eyes gave her an almost ethereal appearance. It's just Alita now, dear. You're no longer my student, we're colleagues. Lita stood straighter, a smile lifting her cheeks. Alita, please come in. Alita walked to the glass wall of the lab, covered in chemical symbols, flowcharts, and life cycle diagrams, all written with wax crayon. Tell me what you found. We found a way to prevent anastomosis, which means... No, decarion, which means... No sporangia, Alita nodded. Walk me for the process. As the morning wore on, Alita became engrossed in the work. Everything else pushed out of mind. Lita's work was promising. It wouldn't solve the problem immediately, but it could lead to an eventual eradication of the rot. Lila looked up from the microscope. Are you getting hungry? I'm ready for lunch. Alita sat up from where she'd been hunched over a pad, comparing the high fare of the rot against those of the various beneficial fungi. The motion brought everything else back into her awareness, including her hip. What time is it? It's past lunch, Lila said, and I have to rush to do a shift in the medicinal garden in an hour. Alita shifted her weight, exploring how stiff she would be when she stood again. Good work. I knew you were going to be an excellent scientist. Thanks, Alita. That means a lot coming from you, Lila hesitated. Are you okay? Do you need some assistance? I'm fine. I'll close up here. You go get lunch before you're late. She gave the younger woman a broad smile. See you tomorrow? You bet. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Once Leela was well out of sight and hearing, Alita hoisted herself to her feet, using the workbench for support. With a sharp breath between her teeth, she forced herself to move around the lab, putting away the microscope and slides, and making sure all their notes were stored safely. The journey back to her room felt interminable, but she walked as straight and tall as she could, smiling at everyone she passed. She felt as though she'd conquered a mountain by the time she stepped into her room. 
As the door closed, she grabbed an apple and lay back on her bed, where she would spend the rest of the day and the night. Alita lost herself in the fungus rot problem, spending weeks making the trip to and from the biolab most mornings. Leela, perhaps sensing how difficult it was for her to make the trip daily, began bringing pads and tea bags to Alita's room on days when they didn't need the lab equipment. She was at least diplomatic about it, claiming it freed up the lab for anyone else who needed to use it. It was one of those days that they were surprised by a visit from Macy, carrying a basket of food. Hey Gran, I made lunch for us. Aren't you supposed to be in history class? Mum had to take care of an emergency in the Ponic system, so class was cancelled for today. She looked at the tall blonde sitting at her grandmother's table. Hi, I'm Macy. She's my gran. Macy, Alita said. This is Leela. We're working on the fungus rot problem. I'm afraid I've taken too much of your time, Leela said. She rose and made a slight bow towards Macy. It was lovely meeting you, Macy. You too, Miss Leela. I'll run these models and see what we get, she said. Nonsense. Alita motioned to the seat. You sit back down and share lunch with us. Turning to Macy, she said... Show us what you brought. Macy brought a canister out of the basket with a large loaf of bread. It's soup. I made it, but... Her gaze turned to the floor. What's wrong, dear? What if it's not good? Macy whispered. Alita lifted the girl's chin with a gentle finger. If you made it, it can't be bad. Let's eat. The three sat eating. Leela taking her first taste hesitantly before digging in. Isn't this cobra green soup? She asked. Yeah, Macy said. Sorry if it's not good. No, no, Leela smiled. I don't usually like cobra greens, but the bitter is completely gone. How did you do that? And what is that tang on the back? Sour berries. Mum says sour to counteract bitter, so I tried it. Macy showed renewed confidence. This is lovely, Alita said. We'll have to have this again. What do you think, Leela? I think I want Macy to cook for me from now on. Their meal continued, while Alita grilled Macy to find out how Nero was doing with the teaching. When all three emptied their bowls, they sopped up the remnants with hunks of bread. Leela stood and said, Thank you for the meal. Macy, that is the best cobra greens anything I've ever eaten. Thank you, Miss Leela. Macy blushed. Thanks for sticking around, Alita said. I'll see you tomorrow. See you then, Leela answered. I wish I could stay longer, Macy said. But I have to clean up the dishes from cooking so I can go to the orchard with Zia. Of course, dear. You have fun with your friend. Alita gave the girl a squeeze and a kiss on the cheek. After Macy had left, Alita stood, using the table to lift herself. She looked at the free bowls and spoons on the table, and decided they'd be fine there until later. Her immediate need was to get flat, and her bed called her. It had been three days since her last synthetic pain pill, and no chance of any more until the end of the cycle. She pulled out the small drawer by her bed. No more willow, either. Alita called off the next day telling Lena that she had some other business to take care of. It was well past midday when she finally rose and walked to the clerical section and visited the population office. As she returned to her room, she noticed how worn the main thoroughfare was. The walls were repainted regularly, but the walkway had seen better days. She wasn't even certain there was a way to fix it up without closing it off entirely. Alita folded all the clothes she wasn't wearing and placed them in neat piles on the bed. She cleaned her room from top to bottom, as well as she could, and shrugged out of her sweater, folding it and adding it to the piles of clothes. Her door chime rang. Come in, Nera. Nera entered with Terran close behind. Grief showed on Nera's tear-stained face, while Terran held back her emotions with a clenched jaw. You're, you're going out? Nera asked. Mum, Terran started. How did you know? I just got approval to have a child, Nera said between sobs. I knew it had to be you. Alita allowed the woman to wrap her in an embrace. Does Macy know? She asked. Terra nodded. She's staying with Zia tonight. She's too sad and angry to see you, but you know she loves you, right, Mum? I know, I know. There's a sweater I made for Macy. I left it out of the donations. It's in the bottom drawer. Alita broke off the hug and looked at the women, her daughter and her friend, with a sad smile. Will you help me to the door? They didn't answer. But each took an arm and walked in silence with her, through the colony, to the door. It stood, stark and grey in front of them. You don't have to do this, Mum. The door opened with a slight hiss, and Alita walked into the waiting chamber. She leaned against the second outside door for support. 
The colony can grow more food, harvest more clouds, make more of almost anything except room. No matter how big the colony is, that's the one resource that has a hard limit. I really wish you'd wait a while, Nira said. I'm the last of my generation. I have to go out the door and leave room for someone else. Your generation is in control now. That's what a generation ship is. The inner door still shut, hiding the airlock. An alarm sounded as the outer door opened, and Terran wailed. <laughs>